In its early beginnings, before the Big Bang, scientists estimated that the universe was not bigger than a real-sized human being. If you had asked them 10 years ago, they would have said, no smaller than a soccer ball. Most scientists agree that our cosmos began with the Big Bang, the largest explosion ever recorded. Based on the information that is available, its TNT equivalent capacity is thought to be 1,054 megatons. However, might it have been all lies? The Big Bang. There is still value in investigating the Big Bang theory, but recent James Webb findings could contradict the Big Bang ideas. If that's all you needed to know, have a good rest of your day. If you're interested in the weird and wonderful details that this most recent web observations have revealed about the cosmos, keep watching. What is it about the most current web data that makes you think the Big Bang theory is wrong, in accordance with what Hubble discovered many years ago? Two of the most often cited pieces of evidence supporting the Big Bang hypothesis are the presence of a cosmic background of microwave radiation and the fact that more distant galaxies have a larger redshift than nearby ones. Both indicate that the cosmos was once much more compact and much hotter than it is now. These two pieces of evidence, along with the discovery of an abundance of components in the early cosmos, form the three pillars of data in favor of the Big Bang hypothesis. The Big Bang idea is based on these findings, although they are by no means conclusive. There are a number of different ideas that came together to form the current cosmological model, sometimes known as the standard model. Everything that exists in that universe, including matter, dark matter, and energy, originated in a single event known as the Big Bang. The standard model is supported by evidence like the accelerated expansion of the universe and the clustering of galaxies. The standard model also makes predictions that may be tested using various types of observations, strengthening our case for the model's validity. Tolman's Test News articles as of late have focused on updated predictions of a huge bust for the same reason. The Tolman Surface Brightness Test is one example of non-destructive evaluation technique. Richard C. Tolman suggested it in the 1930s based on the apparent brightness to apparent size ratio of galaxies. The quantity of light an object emits in relation to its size is a measure of its surface brightness. A galaxy's surface brightness should be roughly constant regardless of its size, since the larger it is, the more light it should radiate. The surface brightness is the same for both nearby and faraway galaxies, despite the former seeming smaller due to their greater distance. In a static, non-expanding universe, the Tolman test predicts that all galaxies should have about the same surface brightness. It isn't a common occurrence for us. Generally speaking, the surface brightness of distant galaxies is lower than that of nearby ones. Its redshift is a correlation of how much the galaxy is fading. It doesn't mean that every galaxy in the cosmos is hurtling away from us, unlike what you may assume. If the faraway galaxies are, in fact, receding at high velocities, you should see two distinct dimming effects, separation and redshift in the far distance. According to the Tolman test, the surface brightness of galaxies should decrease proportionally with both redshift and distance in a simply expanding universe. Only the redshift effects are visible to us. This has led some to argue that the cosmos is unchanging and that light's energy gradually decreases over time. The tired light hypothesis is a common argument made by skeptics of the Big Bang Theory. The Tolman test's results align with what we see if the cosmos is static and all the light has been used up. Because of this, we can exclude the idea of a Big Bang as a possible origin of the universe. Eric Lerner and co-authors published a study with similar arguments in 2014. The news quickly spread throughout the country with Big Bang is Dead headlines. Eric Lerner's research inspired recent assertions that Webb disproved the Big Bang. Today is the day when we reach our destination. A new point of view. Truthfully, both the most recent Webb observations and the 2014 Hubble data back up Lerner's assertion. However, Lerner omitted from his article the fact that data from Hubble and Webb also provide credence to the LCDM theory. Redshift is often misunderstood to indicate that galaxies are receding from us because of their increasing distance. The real answer? Not at all. Galaxies in the distant universe are not moving at breakneck rates. 
The deeper we go into space, the more apart we become. Galaxies experience redshift due to cosmic expansion, not relative motion. This is a small but important distinction. In addition, motion makes the universe's galaxies seem somewhat bigger than they would in a static world. Since the distances involved are so great, even though they are little and far away, they seem much closer and bigger than they really are. As a consequence, the redshift of distant galaxies is directly correlated with their decreasing luminosity. The cosmic microwave background has provided irrefutable evidence against the worn-out light theory. Because of the lack of leftover heat from the first explosion, Earth would have been frozen solid. Additionally, because the cosmic expansion, distant supernova and galaxies should look hazy and stretched in time. Only the Big Bang Theory can explain all of the data in a way that makes sense. Lerner's claim is old news at this point, since it has been demolished on several times. The James Webb Space Telescope has shown several interesting new discoveries, despite its limitations. First and foremost, it has discovered more galaxies and more distant galaxies than we anticipated, which may need large revisions to our current model. A void is now believed to have existed in the cosmos shortly after the Big Bang. Since the universe had already passed its dawn, no stars or galaxies had formed at that time. Webb's higher resolution will make it feasible to see the first galaxies to appear following the end of the Dark Ages. We anticipate that newborn galaxies will be less common and advanced than older ones. But Webb's scans have shown a startlingly large fraction of redshifted, newborn galaxies at very late stages of life. That is exactly the kind of mysterious, surprising information that astronomers had hoped to find. This is a major motivation for the development of the Webb telescope. As a result, we might conclude that the Big Bang Theory is correct, even if it seems that our current comprehension of it is inadequate.